to another video brought to you by Advanced Excel Training. We're going through everything that you need to know for the MRS Excel Expert Exam. Remember to hit the like button and to subscribe to see more Advanced Excel Training videos. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use the cube functions. But first, let's learn a bit about the cube itself. It was created because businesses found that databases were a great way of storing large amounts of data. However, they found it was difficult to generate reports from that data. The database server would have to loop through millions of transactions in order to generate a total. The report would eventually be generated, but the process would take a very long time and slow down the entire system. So online analytical processing or OLAP was invented. The idea behind OLAP is that it pre-computes the totals and subtotals when the database server is not in use. The totals are then stored in a special database called the OLAP cube. The OLAP cube doesn't have to loop through transactions and data because the totals have already been pre-calculated and can be provided instantly. The OLAP cube is basically a cube that consists of smaller boxes with a snapshot of data at a specific point in time. The cube functions are used with connections to the data sources, providing us with a great analysis tool. Before we can create a report with cube functions, we will need to add our data to a data model. If you are using data on Excel, you can start by making sure your data is converted into a table. Then, on the Power Pivot tab, select Add to Data Model, or you can use the following procedure to add your data to the data model. Go to the Insert tab in the ribbon and select Pivot Table. In this example, we're going to choose Existing Worksheet. We're going to select a location for our Pivot Table. And most importantly, click the box Add this to the data model. In the pivot table box, you can choose the fields that you want to add to your report by dragging and dropping the fields into the preferred area. In this example, I'll put region into the columns box, product into the rows box, and sales into the value box. Once you are happy with your report, go to the pivot table tab and then to Analyze. You can then select the OLAP drop-down and choose Convert to Formulas. Note how Excel has converted your data into cube functions. The labels are now cube member functions, while the values are cube value functions. This is where it starts to get difficult. We're going to build our own cube functions from scratch. The following cube functions are available in Excel. Cube KPI member, cube member, cube member property, cube ranked member, cube set, cube set count, and cube value. In this example, we're going to build a cube member, a cube value, a cube set, and a cube KPI member. Let's start by building the cube member for tree. You can activate the cell by typing equals cube member open brackets and inverted commas. Once you insert the inverted commas, Excel will display a connection to the data model. You can select the data model. In this example, we will select this workbook data model. For the cube member expression, we will add our data table, which is named Sales 2018. Then we'll add our heading Product. And lastly, we'll add our subcategory, which is Tree. We will complete our formula by closing the inverted commas and the brackets. Excel will then 
look through the data cube and display the cube member for tree. Next we'll look at the cube value function. In this case, we'll look up the cube value for trees in Cape Town. You can activate the cell by typing equals cube value open brackets and inverted commas. Then choose the data model. For member expression 1, you can add measures and then sum of sales. For member expression 2, you can add our data table, which is named Sales 2018. Then the heading, Product, and the subheading, Tree. For member expression 3, add the data table Sales 2018 the heading region, the subheading Cape Town, Excel will then look through the data cube and display the cube value for trees in Cape Town. Next, let's look at the cube sets function. This is the value for more than one cube member, such as a value for trees and shrubs. First, let's add a new row to the data. You can then activate the cell by typing equals cube set in open brackets. As soon as you type the inverted commas, Excel will display a connection. We'll choose this workbook data model. For the set expression, select the subheadings you intend to include. We'll choose trees and shrubs. We can then add a caption such as trees and shrubs. Complete your formula by closing the brackets. Excel will then display the cube set. Now you can drag the formulas down to display the cube set values. Lastly, we'll build a cube KPI member function. This function will obtain the key performance indicator or KPI member from the cube. But first, we have to create a KPI in our data model. To create a KPI, you can do the following. Go to the data tab and the data tools group Open the cube. Select the tab at the bottom with your specific data. Then perform the necessary calculations. In this example, I'll do an auto sum of cost of sales and I'll auto sum sales. You can then select Create KPI to generate a key performance indicator. Then choose the measure and then click OK. Now that your KPI is available in the, in the data model, you can use it in your report. To display the KPI member, you can do the following. Activate the cell by typing equals cube KPI member, open brackets and inverted commas. You can then select the connection. For KPI name, select your KPI. For KPI property, select the specific property of the KPI you want to obtain. Excel will then look through the data cube and display the cube KPI member. But what's the use of a cube KPI member without a value? We can obtain the KPI value 
using the cube value function. Activate the cell by typing equals cube value open brackets and inverted commas. You can select your connection which is your data model. For member expression select measures and sum of sales. Complete your formula by closing the brackets. Excel will then look through your data cube and display the cube value for the KPI. Wow, that's a lot to take in. But if you're interested in creating Excel dashboards and reports, understanding the cube functions can definitely be beneficial. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for more awesome Excel training videos. In the next video, we'll learn how to use financial functions such as present value, future value, and periodic payment. Thank you for watching another video brought to you by Advanced Excel Training. I look forward to hosting you in the next video. I'm Deborah Gray. Until next time, happy Advanced Excel Training.